Hey? How much bar of boost you running? Only one. Wow, it's not even one. Not even one? Nah. Which sounds lovely. It goes right? alright though, doesn't it? Yeah. I weren't expecting that dog. Yeah, it don't look like much, but it sounds fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> As you guys will hopefully see in the last video, I've done some baseline testing of the car in the spec it is now, which is pretty much, barring a few minor things to make it more reliable, exactly how I bought the car, and now it's time to make it quicker. I've already weighed the car on a weigh bridge, and it weighs surprisingly heavy 1200 kilos. And it is a full interior car with, with um, aftermarket stereo of amp and all kinds of stuff. So the first plan is to make it lighter. I'm not going to completely strip the car bare because a completely stripped car is a bit crap as a road car and it's just not worth it. Um, but I don't need a full interior car. This isn't a daily driver. This isn't something that sits on the streets all day. This is a car just to be used hard and to have fun in basically. I know some people say, oh you can't strip an interior on a sleeper. It's not a sleeper then, but that's not the point. A sleeper to me is if a fast car sees you on the road it would just look like a normal car. They can't see what's inside. They can't see the interior. So it doesn't bother me at all. As long as the outside looks pretty standard, it's a sleeper. Simple as that. I'm hoping we can lose at least 100 kilos. I'm not sure. But we'll do that. And then afterwards, with the less weight, we'll performance test it again and see if we got any gains from the 6.1 to 6.5 60 to 100 time we was getting before. And yeah, if you're wondering, no, I'm not going to show the process of stripping stuff out, because who cares? If you want to see someone strip a car out, you can watch 50 other boring YouTube videos. All I'm doing is showing you the results. You, can, you know how to strip out a car, I don't need to tell you, I'll show you. Right, first job is stuff in the boot. Obviously, you haven't got too much. You've got a parcel shelf, the carpet, some wood. Space saver, which ain't going to weigh as much as a normal full size wheel, and a load of random tools this car came with. So, uh, let's begin. The boot carpet, don't feel very heavy. It is 2.12 kilos. More than I thought, to be fair. Next thing on the scales, the spare wheel. It's only a space saver, but just from lifting it out, it's a fair old weight, so uh, this should be worthwhile. 9.4 kilos <laughs> Next is what looks like the lightest thing of them all which is the wooden whatever it is boot trim It's lighter than the carpet to me so uh, let's have a look 1.39 kilos 1.39 kilos Last up for the boot for now is literally a carrier bag full of all the tools and crap that was in the boot so your jack, the little spare toolkit, stuff like that. Doesn't feel that heavy, I reckon five kilos, let's have a look. Not even that, 3.5. Inside the car, the main things are gonna be the front seats, which I'm fitting buckets, cause these aren't supportable enough for me anyway. The back seats are going. The stereo is going, which includes a amplifier that's under there somewhere. Um, parcel shelf, probably the sound deadening. Well, this job's escalated quickly. Um, I would say we're probably most of the way through. The biggest things are out. These standard G6 seats are some of the lighter standard seats I've ever picked up, but they're still fairly heavy, so let's see what they actually weigh. 15.6 kilos, so heavy, but quite light for standard seats. I reckon I'm probably only going to save 5 or 6 kilos per seat versus a bucket, considering you have to include the weight of the subframe as well. So, not massive savings, but the support the cornering of a bucket is what I really want so any weight difference is a bonus. Rear seat base weighs 6.91 kilos. And I got the larger of the two rear seat backs. 
11.58 kilos, more than I thought it would. This is the smaller of the two back seat bits, 6.2 kilos. I think we all know a parcel shelf weighs bugger all, but uh, let's weigh it anyway. Actually more than I thought. Two kilos for a cardboard parcel shelf. Random piece of plastic boot trim here. Half a kilo, 0.48. This is a rear quarter plastic trim, the boot trim and the sides. 1.85 kilos, just a big bit of plastic. This is the opposite side boot trim. For some reason this feels loads heavier, I don't know why, but let's see. Three kilos. Looks about the same, but uh, weighs more. Next up, a bag of assorted crap from the back. Seat belts, bits of plastic trim, little bits and bobs, but all adds up. And this adds up to 2.92 kilos. Now it's the uh, rear wiper motor, which I definitely don't need. The car didn't even have a rear wiper, it just had the motor. So uh, that's all gone. Quite light. 1.03 kilograms. It even shows, I'm losing light. Right, here's where we are with the stripping. It's all complete. This is five more bags of stuff and the interior has come out. And I'll show you what's on the interior at the moment. This is bare, but the carpet and the rear side trims and all that are going back in. So basically it's still going to be fully trimmed. There's not going to be like bare metal inside apart from in the rear. But the rear side trim's there, all the carpet, all that kind of crap's going back in. So it'll look like a car again. I don't really do completely stripped out and none of that stuff weighs enough to matter. Um, I've removed a lot more than I'd expected to, to be honest. I'm hoping to get under 1100 kilos, which is over 100 kilos less. And yeah, like I said, I've got five bags of five more bags of crap, which I'll weigh now. And I'll weigh all this, and then put the carpet back in, and then put the seats in. So let's see what's going on. I'll show you what's in each of these bags as well. This one is purely um, lining from underneath the carpet and shit like that. It's uh, it's mostly fabrics and rubbery type stuff. This is random bits of trim from the inside I don't need anymore. This is maybe the biggest one. This is all like the tar sound deadening stuff which is underneath the carpet stuck to the floor. And it come up quite easy but it is a lot of it. This is all the car stereo equipment, head unit, amp, speakers. And this is other random bits of trim and floor mats and crap like that basically. So yeah, we're about to find out what all this weighs and uh, then we can add it all up together and see what we've finally down to. First bag is going to be the underneath the carpet underlay crap and the rubbery bits and so on. I don't reckon this will weigh too much but it's enough. Way more than I thought, 6.8 kilos. Second bag is some brackets and plastic trim and all kinds of weird stuff that's hidden behind the panels and under the carpet which I don't need and uh, I didn't even know we were there until I pulled it up so this is kind of a uh, bonus weight loss so let's have a look. A bit less than the last one even though there's metal in this one. 6.39 kilos. Next up probably the heaviest one which is going to be all that tar sound deadening crap which you get stuck to your floor pans. I don't know what this weighs but it's definitely the heaviest of these bags. Less than I thought. 11.62 kilos. This bag is all the car stereo stuff, so a head unit, an amp, um, some wiring, two front speakers, and two tweeters, so uh, not a massive amount, but still. 7.93 kilos. Last bag, and definitely the lightest bag. This is just floor mats and bits of random crap, basically, nothing much at all. This feels like a couple of kilos, but again, every little bit all adds up to a lot, so let's have a look. 4.99 kilos. Here's another bit of weight saving, which is the standard steel bonnet versus 
an aluminium one off a G6R special edition which this one is painted really badly and sat in black but I don't really care it'll go on for now and yeah the difference is pretty much half um, 7.4 kilos for the alloy one and that come up at 14.9 kilos for the standard steel one the next thing I've got to decide on this car is what bucket seats to run or even do I just run a driver's seat or do I run driver and passenger seat I'm honestly not sure because to be fair I hardly ever have passengers in the car because it's purely a, a race car really so I'm half tempted not to even run a passenger seat which would save me well at least 10 kilos either way I've got three seats here two very badass Corbo Kevlar racing seats this one some 1990s job I think it's dated about 1997 or something it's quite old but it's in decent condition and this Corbo Revenge which allegedly used to belong to Steve Soper the famous racing driver which race car that was fitted to I don't know but um, I'm 99% sure it used to be his and last and kind of least a normal fiberglass bucket seat a good one but literally cost me like a hundred pounds what they all weigh I'm about to find out but for fitting wise I mean as cool as Kevlar ones are I don't really care that much so let's have a look what the difference in weight is I mean there's no doubt these are better quality seats because they're Kevlar racing seats but these are uh, might not be FIA approved but um, to be honest for what I'm doing it doesn't make any difference really and yeah the cable ties are just so I can use the scales on them I'm going to hang it off that um, side mount wise I'm just going to use the normal steel side mounts because even they don't weigh much and aluminium ones save about a kilo, kilo and a half but they're so crazy expensive so no point I can't justify it First one on the scales, the cheap one. Six point two kilograms, so not bad. But are the others any lighter? I ain't got a clue. They don't feel much different. I must admit. Next up, the Mega Bucks Corbo Kevlar fancy one out of a race car. I reckon this actually feels a bit heavier, you know. 8 kilos so yeah a little bit heavier it does feel heavier to be fair last but not least this carbon and Kevlar 1990s bucket seat which kind of feels the lightest but it's not by much I must admit 7.2 lastly what do side mounts weigh they feel about a couple of kilos nothing much anyway 1.8 kilos for the side mounts which costs about 20 quid where well, you could get aluminium ones that might save you one kilo but they are incredible many they're 150 pound plus so I can't justify that at all so the answer kind of is cheap fiberglass ones are just as light as fancy Kevlar ones they're probably not as great in a crash but weight wise there's nothing in it this is, for now at least, the finished article of the weight loss. I have done. The battery has been relocated to inside the car. A couple of people were crying about it being held in with giant cable ties before. Well, it's not anymore, so unlucky. Um, the aluminium bonnet, which you've seen, under the bonnet is the same as ever. Inside the car is single fiberglass bucket seat side mount with the side mounts welded to the standard feet from the original seats which were simply cut off after the feet section and then I welded them to the side mounts which means the seat fits no problem perfectly absolutely rock solid as well so that's all good um, running standard seat belts because I don't like harnesses and road cars to the standard mechanism 
clips in just fine. All good. Um, the interior is stripped, as you know. Just keeping all the carpet and the, the trim because it's a road car when it comes down to it. Um, the ECU and the mapping cable is there. No passenger seat for now. I've got a passenger seat and I've got the mounts to fit it. I just can't be bothered at the moment because I very rarely take passengers anyway. At the back, the very rear section's completely stripped, but the rear carpet and rear door cards are all still there. Right, the weight loss regime is complete and the car is working. This is how it is now. I've got the battery cut off there. I've got the, the battery and a 150 amp breaker there and um, it's all good I will put the I'll switch it on and show you start straight away on the button that battery is brilliant starts far faster than it used to on the original heavy 12 13 kilo battery and that thing weighs two and a half so happy days um, it charges it super fast off the alternator when I come back um, you check the voltage on there and it shows like 14 volts even with the engine turned off so uh, all good I've uh, the ECU I've relocated there so I can get to it easier and yeah Idles great, runs great, drives great, happy days. I weighed the car a bit earlier, I'll show you the picture, I did it at a weigh bridge. And obviously because they do big lorries, the nearest accuracy they do is the nearest 20 kilos. And it was flickering between 1060 and 1080 kilos, so I'd say it's about 1070 kilos this car now. And that's a saving of about 130 kilos from standard just by removing some of the interior it's not that bad it's not really noisy it's a little bit rattly but nothing much technically that's equivalent of adding another um, 32 bhp per ton or the equivalent of adding about 40 brake using the standard weight so that's a lot in theory but I will time it very shortly which you'll see next which will tell us if this weight loss really has made a big difference to performance evening I'm out in the Corolla and it's new totally stripped out spec um, I've got the GoPro on and I'm going to try and show you a bit of how it drives now and talk about it hopefully you can hear it with a GoPro speaker it's not great well I can't do it on this little handheld camera because I'm driving but um, I'll try and describe everything best I can and I've do some performance times as well which I may or may not do on camera but I'll get photo evidence of it anyway. I don't know if you can hear me now with the GoPro. It's definitely louder in here. Not ridiculous but with the back strip tight there's a whole lot more road noise. So hopefully you can hear me. Um, the initial the main thing you initially feel about the car is it feels a whole shitload lighter and more responsive now it's stripped out. Um, with like 10% weight loss, it feels like a different car. But 
Hey. How much bar of boost you running? Only one. Wow, it's not even one. Not even one. Nah. Which sounds lovely. It goes all right though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it don't look like much, but it sounds fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, to sum up, originally the car was 1200 kilos on the dot. It now weighs about 1070 by the looks of it, according to the scales, um, which is a saving of 10% in weight. Um, you'd think on the face of it, 10% in weight would increase the power by about 10%. But when you think about it as well, a 10% decrease in weight is uh, everywhere in the rev range, not just like a uh, peak power. And that seems to play out when you actually performance test it. Because as the timing shown, I've gained about 